I can't just make this video without first saying this. At the last restaurant that I worked at, I was known as the sausage boy. So now that I'm making this video, it's really come full circle, unfortunately. Let me explain. So we're in Sausage Land, or Sausage Land if you're into deep fried Gordon Ramsay memes. Two things. First, I was called Sausage. I was called Sausage Boy, not because I made a lot of sausage, but because I literally said the word sausage so much in a New York accent. Not my proudest takeaway, but it's just fun to say. Sausage. The second thing is sausage is astonishingly easy to make. You got a tube, you got some meat, and you stuff the meat in the tube. It, it honestly is that simple. There's a couple things of minutia, like salt percentages and adding fat to it and stuff like that. But other than that, I really honestly feel like more people would be doing it if they just saw Sidge for themselves. <laughs> Why? I think that's gonna be the last sausage pun of the year. Let's just make this, shall we? So the two things that can make sausage confusing is the fat percentage and the salt percentage. You know, to me, the ideal fat percentage for sausage is 20 to 30%, but just to simplify, it's just easier to go ahead and use a boneless pork shoulder roast or a Boston butt roast because those tend to be around the 20 to 30% fat range. And then if you want, you can always just add a little bit of extra fat using pork fat back, which all this you can get from your butcher really easy to find and cheap. Now, obviously, in order to grind and stuff your own meat, you're gonna need a grinder and a stuffer, but luckily, I found this nice little KitchenAid attachment for 30 bucks that does both, so it's pretty dope. Link is gonna be in the description. You might already have one. It's time to put that bad boy into use. Rather than seasoning the sausage by eye, we're actually gonna be working off of a percentage, which for us is gonna be 2%. So in other words, you wanna get the weight of all of your meat and fat for the sausage in grams, and then multiply that by 0 0.02, and that'll give you a 2% weight of exactly how much salt you need to use. So for every pound or 453 grams of pork shoulder, you're gonna need about a half a tablespoon or nine grams of kosher salt. Now it's just a matter of flavoring the sausage, which I will be giving you three different examples. Now before we start spicing or grinding any meat, we need casings. I'm using natural hog casings here. I know that this is something that grosses some people out. It's, it's, it's up to you. But if you're using these natural hog casings, then you need to make sure that you take them out of the packet and rinse their salt cure off, and then just let them sit in warm water for about 30 minutes before using. Now the first sausage that we're gonna be doing is an American favorite, also known as the mild Italian. So you're gonna start with three pounds or 1300 grams of boneless pork shoulder, a quarter pound or 113 grams of pork fat back, which is optional. Then just cut that into pieces that'll easily fit into your grinder. I actually like to cut them into long thin strips so that way it just, it's just faster. Then we're gonna get our spice mix together. So get one tablespoon or six grams of fennel seeds, one tablespoon or six grams of coriander seeds, and two teaspoons or five grams of black peppercorns. Place those in a dry pan set over medium heat and toast them shaking the pan often until they're fragrant, about two to three minutes. Once that's done, just grind them up until they're nice and fine in a spice grinder or blender or whatever or a mortar and pestle and mix that with 2.5 tablespoons or 29 grams of kosher salt. Then combine the meat with your seasoning along with three cloves of garlic finely minced. Mix all those ingredients together until everything's thoroughly incorporated. Then just run your meat through the grinder accordingly. You can run it through a fine or coarse grinding plate up to you. I like it on a fine one. Okay, so you've got your mild Italian sausage meat. But before we start stuffing, let's do the other two iterations. Next, we're gonna be doing a non-traditional bratwurst. So Germans, I'm sorry, this is not a traditional one, but it's gonna be two pounds or 907 grams of boneless pork shoulder and a third a pound or 151 grams of pork fat back highly recommended slice that stuff up and two tablespoons or wait no wait don't do that yet then toss all of your cut pieces of pork and fat with a spice mix consisting of one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper half a teaspoon or three grams of mace or allspice a small pinch of dried savory and two teaspoons or five grams of dried mustard give it a nice little massage then run it through the grinder same as before now the last one is going to be a merguez sausage so you're going to start with three pounds or 1300 grams of boneless lamb shoulder cut that bad boy up along with half a pound or 226 grams of pork fat back highly recommended now to spice this bad boy we're going to do two teaspoons or six grams of cumin seeds and one teaspoon or two grams of fennel seeds toast both of those like before and then grind them into a fine powder and then to that you're going to add one teaspoon or three grams of sumac if you can find it one teaspoon or two grams of ground cinnamon and three tablespoons or 33 grams of kosher salt mix all that stuff together and then add it to your cut up lamb with a quarter cup or 60 grams of harissa paste and seven cloves of garlic minced. Yeah, that's right, seven. We're going hard on the garlic game today. 
toss all that stuff together, and then show them that the grind never stops, 100. Okay, so once you're ready to stuff that ground meat in there, the first thing that you need to do is emulsify that meat and fat together really nice. So you're just gonna do that by kneading it just like a piece of dough and just go back and forth. That's right, we go back down to bread steady even when we're working with meat. And just do that a few times until you can see that the fat is beginning to sort of mix with the meat and it's not quite so separate anymore. Okay, so now we're ready to stuff and your casing should have soaked by now. So once they're done soaking, just run a little bit of warm water through a single casing. Then attach your stuffing tube to whatever grinder attachment you have. Make sure that's screwed on tight. Then rub the tube with just a little bit of oil, spray on oil or whatever, and then slide on a single casing like you see here. Making sure to leave about one and a half inches or four centimeters of overhang. Now this part is easier than it looks. It just takes a few minutes of practice. So start up your stuffer on a low speed and add your ground meat to the feeder. Slowly fill up your casings, pulling the casing when necessary to allow it to flow downward as you fill. Now don't fill these to the point of being super tight. It's okay if it's a little looser or uneven. You can adjust later. You don't want these to break when cooking. Also, if the casing tears, no worries. Just pop the meat back into the hopper and keep going. Now keep this process up until you fill the entire casing, making sure to leave another one and a half inches of overhang on the other side as well. Once it's all filled up, figure out what length you want your sausages. About five to six inches is good. And then start with the farthest end and pinch with both hands to close both ends at that length. Then twist the sausage to tighten and form that closed end. Repeat that along the whole sausage, making sure you're not unwinding any of the other links until you have a fully linked casing. That's it. Just repeat that with all of your meat and casings. Now do check to see if there are any air bubbles. If there are, just poke them with a fine tip needle, or in this case, I used a wall anchor because I didn't have one. Please don't judge me. And yeah, just lightly poke them. Don't tear it. Then just tie off both ends and place these on a baking sheet in the fridge for four hours or ideally overnight so the casings have time to dry a little. Those twists won't unravel when they're dried properly. Also, just make sure to flip them halfway through their drying process just so that they dry evenly. Now you have fresh sausages. You can cook these however you like, but I prefer to gently poach mine by placing them in a pot with just enough water to cover and then gently poach them over medium heat for about 10 minutes. Then you can sear them in a pan or grill them however you want. You can make some nice sausage buns with German mustard and kraut or sort of a fancy bangers and mash or an easy snack with merguez and creme fraiche nice little preserve and lemon relish you know a little bougie but not too bad but do you want to know what else is a little bougie b-roll <laughs> All right, guys, and that is it. So, homemade sausage, which I've gotten a couple DMs on Instagram, Twitter, and all that about people having grinder attachments and never using them. Well, the, if you've got it, the time is now, and you won't regret it. And you know what else you won't regret? You won't regret following me on Instagram, Twitter, and all my other social media, which will be in the link in the description. So, thank you. Thank you very much. So merch is still in the works, but we got a design nailed down. It's being worked on right now, and hopefully some aprons. I'm really trying to figure out how to get aprons going. Uh, I'm talking to Teespring right now. There's just a lot of things up in the air. It's, I don't know why a lot of people don't offer aprons. They just don't care about us. It hurts. It hurts me. It hurts us. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.